Hi, I'm Brian Parks from Belimo Technical Support. Today, I'm at the Belimo headquarters in Danbury, Connecticut, and I want to talk to you about pre-tensioning a Belimo actuator on a damper assembly. What I've got today is I have a sample damper assembly to show you for the training. I've got an NFB24-SR. I have an NMX24-SR. I have a Belimo PS100 power supply and signal generator. I have a 10 millimeter wrench and I have an anti-rotation bracket. The question is, why do you want to pre-tension a damper assembly? The reason is, when you mount an actuator, over a period of time, the seals on the end of the blades can wear out and you can get air leakage around the ductwork or around the damper assembly. So it's important that if we put five degrees of pretension on the damper assembly, it'll allow for a little bit of wear over time and you'll still be able to have a good seal in the duct and have less air leakage. When you order your airside actuator from Belimo, it's gonna come out of the box preset for five degrees of pretension. And I'm gonna show you that here. If you look on the face of the actuator, there's a black scale here with some numbers and it goes from zero to nine, nine. And what that means is that's from zero to 90 degrees. Each of these separations is 10 degrees. And if you notice, there's a little tick mark between the zero and the one, and that's five degrees. So it comes from the factory preset. I'm gonna take and move this hand crank out of the way for now. And I wanna show you this lever here. I have an unlocked and a locked position. And what we do is we open up this up to five degrees. We put this lever in the locked position. That's what's holding it at the five degree location. The very next thing that I wanna show you is this bracket on the bottom of the actuator where we're gonna put the anti-rotation bracket. I've already mounted this one on here today so that we can just save some time. And you see there's a pin. I put two sheet metal screws to hold the anti-rotation bracket. And if you look at the bottom of the actuator, there's a little U cut in this bracket. That's where the pin is gonna sit. It's very important that when you're doing your measurements that that pin sits at about the halfway mark on this U cut. The reason is if you bottom that pin out on the bottom of the cut, you can cause premature failure of the actuator. As an actuator is spinning around on the damper assembly, if you watch it, you'll see that the actuator actually moves up and down a little bit. If you bottom it out, you can cause pre premature failure of the motor and of the actuator. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this on the damper assembly so we could test it. Go ahead and get my anti-rotation bracket in. Now, when you're tightening this in the field, we wanna have between six and eight foot-pounds of torque on these nuts. Now, because I'm doing a demonstration today, just again, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna snug these up so that we can move through the demonstration. Now, I want you to notice when I mounted the actuator, I left some space between the back of the actuator and the face of the ductwork. What's happening is as this actuator is moving, the splines in the back here are also moving and you would end up chewing up, potentially chewing up the face of the ductwork. And in this particular case, there's a seal around the shaft and uh, you would end up ruining that gasket. So we always ask that you leave a little bit of space between the actuator and the ductwork. We don't want to mount it snug up against the uh, device. I'm going to go ahead and take my PS100 power supply and signal generator. I've got it in the off position. I'm going to go ahead and wire up the actuator. This is a proportional control 24 volt actuator. I've got my black common, my red 24 volt power. I've got my white signal wire out from the signal generator, and I've also got my orange feedback wire. I'm gonna go ahead and power this up, and you'll notice that as this thing powered up, that lever did release the first time you power up the actuator, it releases, and the actuator, because it's a spring return, is gonna to move to the fully closed position on its own. I'm giving it a zero signal. This is really a two to 10 volt signal actuator, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 10 volt signal so that it moves to the full open position. The reason I'm doing this is I wanna test the actuator before I put it into full service. 
I'm looking for smooth operation of the actuator. I'm looking to make sure that the shaft is moving smoothly and that there's no issues. I'm also main, I want to make sure that there uh, isn't a problem with the pin on the U bracket back here. Many manufacturers of dampers will cut a slit in the end of the shaft to show you the location of the blades when it's inside the ductwork and you can't tell uh, which direction they're pointing. On this one, there wasn't a slit cut at the end, so I took a black marker and I made a mark to show the location of the blades, which direction they're pointing. Let's go ahead and wait for this to move to the full open position. Okay, the damper assembly, the actuator has moved to the full open position. Everything looks good. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a two volt signal. And again, I'm going to watch for the actuator to close. I'm going to watch the damper assembly. I'm going to look for smooth operation. I want to make sure the shaft is spinning correctly and make sure there's no binding. Okay, the damper has moved to the full close position. Everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my power supply. Now, a question is, say you come onto the job and you've got to do some maintenance and you have to remove the actuator or you get an actuator that doesn't come new out of the box and you want to have that five degrees of pretension. I'm going to show you how you can do that easily without buying a brand new actuator. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. So now I'm going to take the hand crank that comes with the actuator. I'm going to show you how to put the five degrees of pretension on the actuator. If you're missing the hand crank, you can always use a six millimeter hex wrench. It'll do the job just fine. Look on the face of the actuator. It has an arrow in the clockwise direction. I'm going to go ahead and put my crank in. I'm going to begin to turn it. And you'll notice as I turn, the mounting bracket's beginning to move. I'm going to move it till it gets to the five degree tick mark that's on there. I'm going to move this lever to the locked position, and you can hear it. Now it's holding in that position. I can remove my hand crank. I'm ready to remount the actuator, and we're back in business. Let me show you another kind of actuator we use for the air side. This is an NMX24-SR. You can see that it looks a little bit different than the other actuator. This has less torque than that one does. And you can see the shape of the body is a little different, has a different mounting uh, bracket on it. So the very first thing is, I want you to notice this position indicator ring that's on here, the orange ring. It's movable, you can move it around like this. And it has a line on here, and what you would do is you would take and set that in the location of the damper blades. This way, once you mount the actuator, if it's mounted 20 feet up in the air in some ductwork in an equipment room, you could easily look up and see the location of the actuator, whether it's in the open or closed position. I want you to notice that on the face of the actuator here, there are uh, some graduated marks on here. Each of these larger marks is 10 degrees of separation. Now, a nice feature on this actuator is, it has this button on the side, I push it down, and it releases this mounting bracket so that I can move it around. I'm gonna go ahead and move it to five degrees, I release the button, it's now locked in place. I am now ready to go ahead and mount this on the damper actuator. So since I have this here, let me show you one other interesting feature. If I push this down, on the side there's a little clip. I can push that clip in and it will lock the button in the down position. This is now free to move around. Now that's helpful if you're on a job and you're working on a lot of actuators or if you have to do some additional maintenance. To release it, I simply push down. Now the bracket is locked in place again. I hope you've enjoyed the video today. If you have any questions about the things that I showed you here, if you have any other questions about Belimo products, please call Belimo Technical Support at 1-800-543-9038. You can also go to our website at www belimo.us. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the Belimo YouTube channel and leave any comments that you have below.